Donna and Eric. I'm Donna. And I'm Eric. And tonight we are talking about the book, The Keep, from uh, by F. Paul Wilson. And I'm going to have to start this off with, this is going to be a top read of 2024 for me. Yeah. Hey, so we neither one of us had read it before. Right. Somehow, you know, which I find weird because it is such a classic and a lot of people talk about it and stuff. But it's also one that I say a lot of people talk about. It. I've heard people talk about it, but I never hear anybody say that this is a must read or that people need to read it. You know what I mean? It's never on that list of books that people suggest to you, but yeah. it should be. It really should be. Absolutely. And I was a little nervous. Um because with our the last book that we read that was heavily on the Nazis was not so great. Hey, and I was going to make the exact same point. So. <laughs> so I was a little nervous. Granted, that one was written. Was that one written around the same time? I think so. I think they both were. Yeah. So I was a little nervous. Um, but this one is not a, a story about World War II. And there just happened to be this supernatural creature. This is about the supernatural creature that just happens to take place during World War II. Yeah, for um, sure. That was our biggest complaint <laughs> with Wolf Sour is that it could have just been a normal World War II action novel. And, and yeah, this, um, you know, I, I mean, it adds to the level of evil and all the other yeah. things that it makes sense why it's in World War II. But you wouldn't need World War II for this to be. It just, you know, you could have done a different time period. We could have probably got the same results. So, yeah. And it was great because there was one line that really stood out to me um, when Theodore Kuza, the professor, um, was thinking about Molisar, who's the preacher. Um, and then I think it's Kempfer. Um, yeah. The, the SS. The SS, the SS um, person or captain. He was saying how, or I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but basically he said, Kempfer is more of a monster than Molisar is. Yeah, when he was trying to justify what he was doing without knowing the, the actual scope yeah. of what he was dealing with. I think yeah. the interesting thing with this book is, um, it's been so long since I've seen the movie. Same. I, mean, I saw the movie as a kid, so I don't remember anything about the movie other than... um some of the actors that are in it, you know, and I remember it feeling bare bones, you know, and I know Michael Mann directed mm -hmm. it. So I'm a big Michael Mann fan. So it'll be interesting when we jump into the movie. But so when we go into this book, I assumed it was going to be some sort of supernatural ghost or a golem. I thought they were going to lean into the Jewish heritage. So I think that was kind of fun too, is as we're reading this book and, and there's all these different levels to it and the monsters unique but also so many different tropes that it's it was interesting to see how he handled the characters yeah yeah i was it, I, same with me it's been a long time since i've seen the movie um i've seen it a few times um since i was a kid so but it's been probably a decade or more since i've actually watched the movie and i just remember the the creature has always stood out to me in my mind and it looks nothing like what they describe in the book, which, of course, we'll discuss the differences between the movie and the yeah. book when we do that. But I was very pleasantly surprised with the the way they portrayed where the way the monster is actually written in the book. Um, and a funny thing is, is when they first introduced him, I was disappointed a little bit because I thought, oh, I didn't realize this is a vampire book. Yeah. And, and is this going to be? Is this about to become, you know, paint by numbers? And so um, up to that point, though, I mean, it starts, it's got the atmosphere, it draws yeah. you in. You know, you've got this thing preying on the Nazis and the Nazis are in themselves monsters. And, and so it's just such a fun atmospheric book and yeah. so well written and so it's thick it's a it's one of the bigger books that we've read 400 pages or whatever but it's not slow no and so no. i was very I, there's no point in this book where i was too now when i was getting to the end because i just wanted to be done with it so i could be done with it you know to figure out what they were going with i know i was like i wish you know let's go let's go let's go but 
I never felt like I was dragging. It wasn't like exorcist with the medical records or, you know, we've, we, yeah. I think we've complained about every book at having a point where they could have cut something out. Mm -hmm. I feel like this one is pretty, pretty well, re really yeah. well done. I enjoyed, I, th I can't think of too many things I didn't like about the book. And that's the first two. Cause usually we're yeah. here complaining about something, but uh, and we're going to butcher the names. So everybody yeah. just have to, to deal with that. But yeah. um, I mean, so the whole idea of this is that the there's this uh, keep. I liked how they started it off too. They started it off with uh, the bad guys sending the SS to this keep because the guy that's in charge there, Captain. Uh, War Warman. Warman. Yeah. Warman. Warman was uh, reporting that his men were dying. Yeah. And this is just this keep out in the middle of nowhere in Romania. It almost felt like it was on like a like a mountain passageway between two areas that you could barely get to. And it really doesn't have any uh, military. And it wouldn't have had any military importance except for they want to build a new, you know, concentration camp in this area to start rounding up gypsies and Jews from Romania. If they weren't doing that, I don't think they would have cared about this right. place they wouldn't have had to to take it over so and then and then the book actually starts you drop back in the uh, time to when the captain gets there and then you see how his men are dying initially and stuff so i yeah. just thought it was i thought they handled it really well with the setup and then it's really interesting just to see because nobody knows what's going on nobody knows how why the keep was made uh, built none of the locals know anything they're just there you know keeping up keeping it because they're paid to do that um I think it's funny that there's an inn there, you know, for people to visit and because yeah. nobody goes to this area. Yeah, and but they so, said that it was probably made into an inn for the workers that were building yeah. the keep. Yeah, which is it makes sense. Yeah. But of course, Germans, the Nazis are, you know, greedy and and so they start trying to peel the, the crosses off the wall and they accidentally peel the wrong cross off. Yep. So, and then that starts the whole thing. And at the beginning, what did you think? I mean, it's like some sort of, uh, I didn't think vampire at all. No, you know? no, I definitely didn't. It, it felt more like a nightmare or shadow creature, maybe a demon. Demon. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking demon. Um, because I don't remember now I've seen recently in books of horror when someone has, um, asked for a recommendation on vampire books, mentioned the keep and I'm like, huh. I don't remember the movie being about a vampire. Right. Um, and of course I had never read the book before. And um, when I was, when you start getting into the book, you're like, Oh, okay. This is a vampire book. Um, Which would have been disappointing if they would have continued on that path. Cause I was really, you know, as he grows more powerful, it makes sense though. He grows more powerful. He becomes, you know, you start seeing his human form. He starts talking to the professor and the and the daughter that are dragged, you know, to the keep because they're, he's a historian. So he may know some things, which I thought was interesting. Uh, you know, an interesting idea to get these characters to the place. Um, and it, it, that was funny too, because of course everybody hates the Nazis. And everybody's scared mm -hmm. of the Nazis. So as soon as they can, they mentioned somebody else so that that the Nazis will focus on the next person and leave them alone. So yeah, that's where we got a lot of pass in the buck at the beginning of the book. So um, I also thought it was, uh, um, I thought it was a good choice the way that he wrote the captain, Captain Warmer or whatever, yes. that he made him less of a quote unquote Nazi and more of a, soldier in a bad situation you know mm -hmm. where he doesn't believe in any of the nazi nonsense but he does love his country and he is uh, a part of the army and yeah. so while he won't join the nazi party of course they are who's in power and he's kind of just doing what he does and hoping that he just to survive and get home it looked like yeah at that point, you know yeah he just wanted to basically retire from the army and just be done with it i loved that character um because he kept standing up to Kemp Kempfer, yeah. um, you know, and it was just like, like, especially when Kempfer first got there and tried to take over his quarters and he's like, no, get out, you know? He's yeah. And, like, I think, <laughs> and I think that that was a good characterization of some of the people in the, in the Nazis, the, the, 
weaker willed or the maybe some of the weaker you know the people the bullies you know the people mm -hmm. that that are that are getting those are the ones that are in the ss those are the ones that are taking advantage of the nazis being in power they're the ones that are you know but the captain knew his true colors and from world war one when they both fought in a battle and one of them ran away and the other guy fought and and won awards and saved the people in his you know platoon or whatever at that's you know specific spot and yeah I, so it just shows you that everything's not so black and white you know with these and he was ready to leave if he didn't have yeah. to be there because of the ss stuff he would have taken his men and left i think yep. i think he on the first like the second night he probably would have yeah. yeah and so it kind of gives you that idea that he's looking out for all of them and even the townsfolk i mean how many times did he come in and stop the ss stormtroopers or whatever from doing whatever they wanted to to get the information that nobody had yeah and so he saved people more than than not at the same time he's still part of that army yeah. and he's so he's still the enemy he's still a bad guy in its own right but you could see within the book he's battling with it wondering if maybe by being you know doing what he's doing has he kind of sold his soul or forsaken himself which is it's always interesting when they get a little deeper into these characters and we kind of see that sometimes the villain isn't always a villain um and sometimes you know there's more more layers to them than just straight up evil or whatever so books like this this is this tackled world war ii and gave us a really good horror story. And I, like you said, I just think it was really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I loved, you know, he gave us those two different Nazi soldiers. Um, and, you know, cause you think Nazi, you think evil, mm -hmm. you know, but there were some people I'm sure in that army in real life that had no other choice, you know, yeah, and they were know, just, they were trying to do the best they could. Like he even told uh, the professor, he's like, I've done all I can, you know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm helping you as much as I can. Right. And at the same time, I know it's day we would say, well, you know, you could have done X, Y, Z, but you know, yeah. we're not in the situation that they're in. And that's an interesting way to, to mm -hmm. approach it. But at the same time, he's dropping hints. Hey, you know, you could, Maybe y'all can get out of here if you get this other stuff done or maybe this, uh, you know, when he was like, hey, if we can, nothing happens for another day, this other knucklehead's gone and then we can all leave. Yeah. And then, of course, the daughter, she's might be the only character I have an issue with is, uh, what was her name? Magda. Magda, yeah. She starts off so strong, you know, even though the, in a way she's being bossed around by her dad and stuff, but she's there. She's his, you know she's kind of the victim to her father's illness. So yeah. she has to take care of him and she's given up forsaken her life to make sure his life, you know, continues. And, uh, and then she's fine until she falls in love or, or whatever. They start doing the thing with Glenn. And then it kind of turns into that brain dead. Sometimes, you know, there's parts where she's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't make, you know, she's like throwing everything out the window and now she wants to be with the guy. And I thought, well, that's a quick, 180 turn around yeah yeah but i, I mean, get you know yeah it just said it had that it had that feeling of silly romantic novel you know that little section and then she kind of teeters back and forth until the till she has the final confrontation with her father but uh but you know she was an interesting character and i can't yeah. imagine how difficult it would have been to not only be a woman but a jewish woman in that situation yeah, and so, an unmarried Jewish woman because yeah. you know, she's taking care of her father who really can't protect her because he's ill, um, you know, and so. And she, has, she has the stigma of being unmarried after, what, 25 or whatever. Yeah, and that, she's that 31, itself, I yeah, think. That, yeah. So that makes sense, too, you know, that she had that hanging, looming over her the whole time. But it also was funny because she didn't care, you know. She wasn't about that. She was more about serving her father and the music and all that stuff. Yeah. So she, she had, she had this sensibility of a modern, you know, woman that you might get today who puts the relationship off until later, but she's in a time period where that was so frowned upon and seen mm -hmm. as weird. So she has that weird, uh, stands out in the crowd kind of situation. But yeah, I just thought it was funny. As soon as she fell for Glenn, it was, you know, just, 
It's like uh, her brain turned off a little bit on a, some yeah. of the passages, you know, and that's probably just him writing that out like that. But it just felt a little weird at the end. Yeah. And and I got to say, you know, you, you have books that are horror books and you have the 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 bad guy or the creep, you know, the, the evil person. But, you know, Molossar was all about caring for his people. You know, he was like, I will go to Berlin and kill Hitler to save my people. Right. And but then at the end, um, did you think that because um, Glenn, when he reveals that he's the the Yang or whatever to the bad guys, Yang, he says that everything he said is a lie and that he was going to use the the suffering of Europe to to grow even stronger so then i got to the end of the book and i thought well maybe he was lying about doing all that just to to keep the professor going yeah until the professor stole the the artifact that kept him locked in the keep it's very smart it's a very smart story yeah to, to have the character so as we ramble towards it it turns out he's not a vampire he's not a vampire that feasts on blood he's a vampire that feasts on misery and um fear and anger so he he grows stronger with people's um you know just their misery and so mm -hmm. she wouldn't accept it she kept saying that's not possible you can't do that but i mean i thought if you can believe in a vampire you should be able to believe into that so. yeah in this yep and then exactly. if you go back and look once you learn that you think she's like well he saved me but did he cuz he he saves her in a way that brings her to his father and the father immediately loses his mind and yells at her and banishes her from the place, yep. which destroys her and makes yep. her miserable. And the vampire is just over on the corner, just, you know, um, yucking it up, enjoying all this stuff. But she thinks that <laughs> yeah. he, he saved her and he thinks that he saved the her father. And, but every time it happens, it's always been, there's another condition that somebody was being driven, you know, insane with fear or, um, panic or any of that other stuff so um so i'm thinking he wasn't going to kill adolf hitler yeah i think he was just going to continue to pump in that thing and get rid of the dad he just needed that that sword to be removed yeah yeah i i actually had met f paul wilson at the very first um scares that care author con um i brought him my old my copy and i had him sign it and i wish i had read the book before i had met him because you know i'm curious if he got any backlash from the um the notes of how do i want to put this when the professor was saying molasar was reacted to the cross he was repelled by the cross so that means jesus christ was the savior and in judaism you they don't believe Jesus Christ was the mm -hmm. savior. So and then he started thinking, well, are we wrong? Is our, is our whole religion a lie? Um, so I'm curious. Number one, I'm curious if he's Jewish. F. Paul Wilson. Um, and then I wonder if he got any backlash for that. Because you know how people are with their religion. You know, right. you say anything anti-Christian and the, the Christians are going to get on you. You say something about judaism and the you know the jewish are going to come after you so right i'm glad you said this because i thought about it today and i didn't know what i was thinking about and now i think i have the idea in my head so he shows the cross and and malazar goes insane like get it away from me he's hiding from it he's screeching at him making him think that that cross has power right mm. but it, then the cross is given to captain warner and when he's underground, he has the cross and he's going and he finds the dead bodies. And then Malazar's there and he pulls the cross out. Remember, Malazar reaches mm -hmm. over, grabs it and squishes it. And at the time, I thought, well, that's weird because that's the same cross. But now I'm thinking as you when the way you worded that question makes me think and we our discussion about misery, the professor became miserable thinking oh, that yeah, his religion yeah. was no longer anything. Yeah. that he, he was living a lie. And that whole day and the next day, he felt betrayed and sad and despondent. And I wonder if the vampire guy did that to set that guy up to feed off of his despair. And then later we find out that the cross has no power. Yep. And the captain tries to use it and he kills the captain right away. So now, and I didn't think about it as I was reading it, but I kind of had this weird, something's off here, but 
now that we're talking about it, and that's kind of the fun part about doing this, is I'm wondering if that's what it was. And now you go back and every time that that vampire guy was interacting with somebody, who was he effing with, you know, and who mm-hmm. was causing the misery so that he could grow stronger and stronger. And so right. I, I think that might be the answer is that he actually didn't, the writer doesn't think that either way. I think he thinks that the the characters thought that, and then that allowed them to feed off of each other. Yeah. That's how I would interpret it. But yeah, no, I think it's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of, if he's not Jewish, it's kind of brave to, at this time, this was written, what, in the early 80s, to kind of dive in. Yeah, 81. And we're going to have a conversation with an author that's going to be at AuthorCon, Texas AuthorCon, uh, you know, when we start doing that series. And remember, he was telling us that he had written a screenplay that had a Jewish, strong Jewish um, vibe and that they had rejected it. And this was like in the nineties or early two thousands. So, I mean, this feels like this is a brave choice at the same time. Can you write a Nazi novel and not include the Jews? I don't know. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. You, you have to be, especially when we're talking about the suffering and all the things that you need for this character to thrive as a villain. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, and I just think if if the author is not Jewish, um, the amount of research that he yeah. had to have done, um, not only about the war, but the you know the geography, but the religion as well, you know, and, and the gypsies and all of the, the gypsies, all the other yeah. stuff. He did a it's a it's 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 perfect because it's got just the right enough of um, research realism as you're reading it to make you continue to read without ever pausing Mm -hmm. and think, okay, I wonder if he did any research, but not so much research where you're like, for the love of God, I'm reading a manual, like the exorcist (laughs) with the medical stuff. And so, yeah, no, he just, I'm happy um, that we got to this one. Um, Yeah. It it was a fun read. Yeah. And I like the little, um, I don't want to say nods to Dracula or, but, as you're reading, especially at the beginning when they're describing Worman and his troop, his platoon's journey to the keep, um, mm-hmm. the Dinu Pass, yeah, that was it, in in the, in Dracula, um, Wallachians or Wallachians, of course, was a big part of Dracula because I think that's what Dracula was, because um, that's where what Romania was at the time. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of like, wow, this is really cool because. And I mean, actually, he is a character in the book too. I mean, yeah. we've learned that the other guy is using Vlad to be, to hide his evil as yeah. he's, as Vlad's doing his crazy stuff and they, everybody thinks he's the vampire. It turns out that there's actually that spirit vampire there. Yeah. So we got mosquito eaters in the house, just constant. Oh, geez. It's that but, time yeah. of year in Texas. You just get, you know, there's like a thousand, <laughs> you step outside and there's, a, it's like a swarm of them. So. Oh gosh. Yeah, so it, this all in all was a completely fun book for me um, to read because I got those little like, and it's funny because we just read Dracula not too long ago, so yeah. you get those Dinu Pass like, who thinks about Dinu Pass? But yet here it was in the back of my brain, and I'm like, oh, Dinu Pass, Dracula. Um, you know? Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of cool things, and the other thing is, is like unlike say. I mean, I'm going to throw it under the bus, but you know how you have you you've read it, right? Mm-hmm. It goes from this evil clown and then it's real scary. And then it starts to try and get kind of cosmic, you know, you get a little bit more and more and it's wider and wider. And then it kind of, it, it's, it, it kind of loses its footing a little bit, you know, yeah. it's got parts, giant turtle, all that stuff. And you're kind of like, what's going on here? This book has the same kind of vibe. We think it's a singular vampire. Then we learn that it's this thing that's been an entity that's been alive forever. And then now, then we learn that it, there's another one that's a light and dark, you know, chaos and light and stuff. Mm. But as he expanded the the scope of the villain, I never once thought this is turning silly yeah. or this is getting weird or this is, I just don't get it or I don't enjoy this. This is dumb. I never got that way. I just kept thinking, okay, there's another layer. He's peeling back. He's he did it in such a way that it just keeps you going. And every time you got to a point where you might have gotten bored with what he was doing, he peeled another layer. And then all of a sudden we've got another chunk of information that makes it that much more interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's just a really well done, really well yeah. done book. 
Yeah, I'm I'm I just so mad. I would have loved to, have, you know, talked to him about what he thought of the movie. And, you know, I was just really starstruck because this is F. Paul Wilson. And I had grown up watching, you know, The Keep. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny because what I told him, I said, oh, yeah, me and my, you know, my parents and, and my brother and I used to watch that movie all the time. Um, you know, he commented about the, the love scene that was in the movie. And I'm like, oh, you know, my parents really didn't care, you know, what they, as long as it wasn't pornography, actual pornography, they didn't care what we watched. And, um, you know, I would have loved to have just had a, a longer conversation with him because he was a, a sweet person. To get to know and that's always good too when you meet the author and they and they're not full of themselves or jerky yeah. and stuff it's always yeah cool. yeah especially when they're a big like, name when they're a big yeah, name exactly so yeah. i'm like every year when scares that care is coming i'm hoping that he comes he's coming back you know but i'm like oh not this year not this year <laughs> i um the only thing i might have been questionable about is the very very end we rarely even talked about Glenn. So this guy shows up. He's in the whole book. He's racing to get to the keep from, I don't even remember where he was. Was he in Spain or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Far enough away that he needed to get in a boat and 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 get there across a whole bunch of stuff and then go through the mountains. But he gets there and he's comes across as, I mean, it kind of comes across as a peasant, right? Mm -hmm. And then somehow he has all this money and they, people keep trying to rob him. So he learned that he's, that he can fight and he's got all these other things and he's kind of smart and he gets there and he's just hanging out watching the keep. And then him and, and Magda has start to have that relationship. And, and then he starts to say things that make you think that maybe he's way more than just like an agent that's dealing with it. And then he becomes this comes out that he's this person or this entity that's been around as long as the bad guy has been. Um, but at the end, he, he he dies, right? That's what we were supposed to believe that he dies with the bad guy, and but that the prologue or the epilogue doesn't have it has him alive at the end. So I did find that a little. I I assume that there's a sequel. Yeah, there's two more. So maybe he's in those, and then it makes more yeah. sense. But I I I would have been maybe a smidge happier if and if, and that. Take like I said, I don't know what happens in the sequels, but if this was a one shot, it would have been it would have made more sense that if the vampire dies, the other guy dies too. Yeah, the way they died, they fell from a great height to be smashed onto the ground. So, but can that really kill supernatural beings? Yeah, that's the other thing though that that did seem like a kind of a wimpy way to kill him off. Yeah, um, but I, or does he stab him at all with the sword? He puts the sword together. Maybe he stabbed him too. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do want to read the, the next two books just to see what happens. Yeah. Um, so those those have gone on my list. Um, so I'm very... Super clever too. Just every little detail when they, they gave us a reveal of something that they had mentioned earlier in the book. It, it, none of it was ever, oh, that doesn't make sense or this isn't any good or, you know, the the the... The points aren't connecting. Everything connected so well. He did a really, like you said, he did a really good job with his research and the characters and everything. So, yeah, yeah, really good. This is probably is this the best one we've read uh, since we started the project. Um, yeah, I gotta say. I mean, it's that or it's The Shining, I guess. Or yeah, yeah, The Shining, to of... another top read of this year for me. You know, the problem is, is that we read those werewolf books in between. Yeah. And uh, that really sucked the joy out of a lot of it. So I can't remember <laughs> the stuff before. Yeah. I know we enjoyed. I mean, yeah. I, but mean, I we, mean, we did the Hellbound Heart. And yeah, I mean, that's probably the third. I'd probably put that maybe three or four. Yeah. Not five out of what we've read. But yeah, the keep this would go on my personal top 10. For sure, maybe my top five reads. Yeah, you know, I'd have to sit down and really think about it. But it, it was—it's a good book. It's yeah, it's one I would suggest to somebody looking to get into horror. That question we absolutely. always absolutely, yep. You know, if they have, if they have the, uh, and I don't even know if you need the attention span. This is the first book in a long time where I didn't feel like I was doing an assignment or that I needed to to hammer out time i was like every time i got a minute that i thought oh i need to be i can read i went mm -hmm. and grabbed the book i was excited to get back into it 
Yeah, I was a little hesitant before I started it. I was like, oh, I hope this isn't like Dracula and, you know, Wolf's Hour and all, you know, those yeah, other books that yeah. we had read. I'm like, I don't want to be disappointed because I have, you know, like I said, I'm such a bad girl over F. Paul Wilson. I'm just like, I didn't didn't want to be disappointed. Um, but then when yeah. I started reading and I'm like, holy crap, this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, I was impressed, very impressed with it. Yeah. Now we got our covers here. I think I only grabbed a few, but they all had the same theme, and they either yeah. were really cool or really dull. Yeah, like I'm not a fan of this. Yeah, this is kind of. I get why it's this way, but it's not. It doesn't sell. It doesn't tell you anything other than there's yeah. Nazis in the book. Yeah, it looks like a lighthouse too yeah. to me. So, eh. I'm a, I, eh. Yeah. <laughs> this one's kind of cool. I I don't. It's got I mean, that weird nonfiction vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it also has that, you know, I mean, he's got a lot of books coming out that they, I guess they reprinted whoever this is, that that has this look now. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're put together by their series and stuff. Again, though, I could easily be a book about castles. Yeah, and and this looks like the guy is walking through a hospital. Yeah, that's the vibe I get from that. So. And that doesn't look like anything like World War Two. It looks like a guy in like, you know, yeah, eighty seven or ninety three or something. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it's terrible, but it doesn't sell yeah. me on this is a horror novel or anything. So yeah, this one is my <laughs> yeah. favorite. Yeah, this is like nineteen eighties. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. 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 I just I wanted this version, this edition, and I just couldn't find a copy. Um, and if I'd have seen that, I'd have been like, oh, it's a vampire book. Yeah. Right. So I guess yeah. I'm kind of happy I didn't see it till afterwards. But yeah, this is 100 percent And I also like how it's almost a cross, but it's not a cross, you know, because right. it keeps the top part. Just, so that kind of it it pulls you in to make you think one thing, but it's really not. Yeah. So. Just like yeah. the crosses in the in the keep are not really crosses, except for I guess was one of them, or is it just yeah. the fact that it was the sealed stone that was the only thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah but this is this is great, and and looking at it, it kind of gives me like the the center part here. It kind of gives me vibes of um, the jackal from Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Even though that happened like way after this book, this version was published, you know, but yeah. that's kind of the, the vibe I get from that. Just probably yeah. because of the way it's like kind of like in a cage there, you yeah. know, with the, the T. But yeah, this is my favorite, favorite. Cover. I think it would be mine too. Yeah. yeah. This, I, I like it. It's simple. I bet you it's a hardback. It kind yeah. of feels like a hardback slip cover kind of thing. Mm. But you know yeah. what? It could easily be other than the fact that it says supernatural horror on the front, you could easily think this is just a World War II novel. Yeah. Yep. And I wonder if it's just me seeing it or I was if just it was in intentional. It looks like Dracula there. Right. I was like, I just noticed it too. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I wonder what the, that that's the dude. That's the bad guy. Yeah. So, so like I said, I don't know if it's intentional if they made it look that way. I'm glad you saw it too. <laughs> so yeah, must have maybe I guess been intentional. It has that feel, and we know the book came out in the '80s, but it does have that feel of the late '70s slipcover that you see at the used bookstore. Yeah, you know, they all had that kind of feel. But yeah, no, it's it's fine. It's better than the first one we saw for sure. Mm, yeah, this is the version that I have. The cover that I have. Um, you can't really tell, but it's the the red parts are metallic so oh, okay. they're like the that's nice yeah so that's yeah. kind of cool it's cool because it does give you that feeling of blood and yeah. that that little excess to it so then is it a paperback though yeah is it a large size paperback or is it normal no it's normal mass market okay yeah yep uh i've actually never seen that cover either so really yeah yeah, this is the version that I brought with me. I got it off Thrift Books. It's the tour version. Um, okay. And I brought it with me and had, had him sign it. That's cool. So, and you know what? That cover is a perfect cover to have signed. 
It's beautiful yeah. with that nice white spot. You, he's got a place to put it. If you if he signed the cover, if you got on the inside, it's fine too. But I'm just saying it's it's a, one of those covers that you could easily see people. Yeah. And it's on. intriguing too because you're like, hmm, spellbinding, chilling, blood curling, curdling. Yeah. And then you're like, hmm, what could this be about? You know, you don't really it know. Definitely, but you're yeah, intrigued. But it, <laughs> and yeah, and the color scheme works. Everything about it is way better than the first one we were kind of tearing apart because they just yeah. kind of slapped it together. It felt like. Yeah. And then we have this one. I like this one too. That's the one but, I have. Yeah. I really like this cover too. Because I like how yeah. the, all the crosses and. Um, and the, the, the key part is metal and yep. the crosses are metal. So you get a little oh, bit of yeah. shine off of it. So um these are the i just love these old style mm. uh covers you know back when they kind of put a little extra make sure that you know you got a horror novel yeah so that's I, the berkeley edition um, yeah let's see does my book say first tour edition was may 2000 so the book was written in 1981. So the first tour edition, which is what I have, is from 2000. Oh, I didn't realize it was that recent of a cover. Um, and yet it's still a good cover. It's still a good cover, yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel like it's a uh, instruction guide or a manual to visit castles or something like that. So Yeah. You know, it's funny because a lot of the older books that we've been reading – um, excluding Frankenstein and Dracula, um, have got a lot of different publishers. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Like I don't know what you know because you have the Berkeley version, I have the tour version. Um, I'm sure this is a different version. Let's see, does it say it on the cover? No, it doesn't say it on the side, on the front, probably on the side, but I can't tell what that logo is. Um, you know, this is probably a different publisher, so I'm curious why that's a common theme with with older books that they've. I know that there some of them will like, or in the past they used to like. You'd have somebody would get the hardback rights, and then somebody would have the paperback rights, mm -hmm. and then you have people that have the overseas overseas rights for paperback oh, right, and right, hardcover, yeah. and so just depending on who purchases what. And maybe it's one company owns all these different publishing houses and then they publish yeah. underneath different ones, depending on the genre, maybe. Yeah. I don't know for sure. Or it could just be that they let their their um, contract run out and then they sell the book to a different to, publisher. Uh, to another place, yeah. You will have to we'll have to bug uh, Ronald Sh Kelly when we go to scares and ask him about that because I'm yeah. sure he has some info. That's a good know, that's a good idea. Zebra went out and and he had you know, some of his books have popped up in different places and he's had different publishers over the years and stuff. So, yeah. 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 We'll definitely have to remember to ask him. That's a good idea. Yeah. Top, top 10, easy, even like you said, even the top five, um, you know, this year we've started off with some really good books, the shining. Um, I know that's one of your favorites, Stephen King or your favorite of Stephen King. Um, and then the keep, and it's only March. Yeah, so I think uh, we probably did. Did we do Frankenstein this year too? Or was that the end of last year? I think Frankenstein was the end of the year. So this is our second book of the year. Why does it feel like it should have been more than that? <laughs> it does feel like that. But I guess the the skip. Well, we've been doing the movies too. So maybe that's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put us into it. But yeah, no, we've started this year off way better. Last year, we started off with some of the werewolf stuff. Yeah. And it, and it really kind of. We struggled to find ones that we enjoyed. Mm. Um, so it's nice to start this way. And, and I'm real excited about the next book we're going to read. I haven't read it in a long time. Yeah. And so it'll be fun to jump into that one. And uh, and I'm really interested to watch the movie because mm -hmm. I have very soft memories of the movie. So yeah. it'll be really cool to see not only how good the movie is itself, but then to compare it to the book, knowing what we're supposed to know now. Because right. I would have not known that in the in the past, of course, since I just read it now. So, yeah, it's yeah, uh, right. it's a good project. This is a fun yeah. one. This is a very fun one. I'm very, it's and I think it's nice too that both of us haven't seen the movie for a long time, 
because we weren't pre with with the exception of me having this base memory of what the creature looked like in the movie. Well, now um, that when you said that earlier, uh, image flashed into my head, and I'm ninety nine percent sure it's the creature from the movie. And mm. so I'm like, so I'm I'm ex- interested to see it too if uh, if I'm thinking of the right thing. Yeah, and and I remember there was the the professor and his daughter, and he was you know. Um, disabled and then of course the nazis and then the the glenn character um like i don't even remember if that was his name in the movie um so it, that i remembered but it was what stuck mostly was the image i have in my mind of the creature so i'm really interested i can't wait yeah. to watch the movie and discuss it and i'm a big fan of the director and this is an early movie he did so he's not gonna have as much control as he does in his later stuff so it'd be interesting to see mm-hmm. um, depending on what we you know, what medium I can find it on to see if there's any behind the scenes information and stuff. So that's always yeah. my favorite thing to do when we watch these movies yeah. is to get into all that nerd stuff in the background. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to hunt him down so I can ask him, I'm like, how much input did you have with this script? And like... Yeah. Cause that would be really interesting too. Cause it's funny. Cause you know, sometimes the writers, they don't have any whatsoever. Yeah. You know, they're just happy to get it picked up optioned and then they don't, touch it again or they get the paycheck and yeah yeah. and some are fine with that i know i've read other horror stories where the writers are like well i'll never do this again because they just did such a bad job that i don't want anybody to touch my stuff so yeah maybe it scares all uh i'll harass brian keen and say please bring back f paul wilson i have questions (laughs) yeah or maybe he'll have them at his shop at the new vortex that they opened vortex yeah Um, yeah. I saw some pictures online. It looks like it's a pretty cool place to go. Maybe he'll have, maybe he can talk him to come there for something. I don't know how close that is. It's probably a bit of a drive for you, but I know it's closer than than I am. So yeah, everything's closer to me than than you, <laughs> yeah. except for Oklahoma, Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> Very true. Which I'll be. Uh, this is this episode will probably be out before I go. So March twenty third. I will be at uh, Gardner's in Tulsa. It's a used bookstore, and I'll be there all day. So if anybody wants to stop yeah. by, yeah. who is Mike going with you? Or is uh, it just you? I think it's gonna be. I think Don's gonna go. John, Take Don's gonna go with you. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that should be fun. I'm bummed I can't make it. Um, because it's Sean Stanford, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The uh, master Photoshop. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's had so much fun with all that, and it's always fun to pop on Facebook and see that he's created another, you know, picture yeah. of somebody that you know, or and sometimes even of yourself, which is yeah, can be quite awkward. Depends on what he does, but yeah, no, he's been champion for indie horror. He, I mean, he's popped on here and he's really gone. He's taken the baton and run with it, so it's really yep, cool. Absolutely, he yeah, absolutely has. And now it's time for our Not Stephen King Book of the Week. Um, And I figure since The Keep is sort of a vampire book, we would do a vampire book. Um, And this one um, was recently released, Fall of the Vampires Armageddon uh, by Kiso Healy. This is not your typical vampire book. Um, This is a world where vampires have become top of the food chain. Um... They're typical families. They live in the suburbs. Um, Humans are hunted. But what happens when you become top of the food chain and you eat all your food? Well, things just go badly. Um, Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So this is a story about Vinny and his sister Alyssa. They're vampires. Um, And what happens is the, the vampire council, it is um spreads a lie because all the vampires are starving there's they've eaten all the animals what it what few humans that are left are in hiding they can't be found um so the council starts a lie that vampires can feed on each other and so the world goes crazy because vampires are starving and they they need their blood to live um and just chaos ensues and Vinny and Alyssa. Vinny was like, that's a lie. That's not right. 
and he tried to convince his older brother to not go out and feed. Um, and anyways, all this stuff happens. Vinny ends up hanging, um, meeting up with a group of humans that are in hiding. Um, you know, him and his little sister, they're just trying to survive. Um, and it's a really great book. It, you know, it's the epitome of be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. You know, and Vinny learns from these humans that they're not just animals, they're people. Because he was raised to believe that humans are animals. Right. Like livestock. Yeah. So it's really interesting and um, very heartfelt, very exhausting because the action does not stop. Um, it's just like, go, go, go. Um, and it's not a short book. It's like 300 pages. So it's, you know, it's a pretty long book and you just got to be prepared to be exhausted because there's just poor Biddy and Alyssa, like things just do not let up for them. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that it's a longer book because the, the subject sounds, you know, it needs to yeah. be a little more in depth. I'm glad that he did that because I mean, he's a, he's got a lot of stuff out yeah. there. And so, yeah. And I think, I think this was a re-release. I think it had been released years ago and he's kind of like, you know, Cleaned it up, new cover. Cleaned it up, thing. gave it a new cover, re-released it. Um, yeah, it's a it's a really great vampire story. It's not like any vampire story I've ever read. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, and it's like, you know, Vinny's like, oh, they never taught us about that in school. Just like, you know, people say, oh, they didn't teach us in school about the real thing that happened to the Native Americans when Columbus came over, you know? Um, right. So Vinny was saying same things like that. Oh, they didn't tell us that we came from humans, that we used to be humans. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was really great. This whole world that he created is just fantastic. Um, Very cool. So yeah, and definitely check in. it out. Yep, it definitely ties in. Um, so yeah, check it out on Amazon. Um, I really liked it. It's a great book, um, you know, and it's written well. Um, you know, sometimes when you read a book and it's like nonstop action, it's just like, oh, this is too much. But it wasn't too much. Like all of that action had a purpose. So, so yeah, check it out. And thank you for joining us on this episode. Take it easy.